Then on, the police force was different for Simon. But he stayed there. He wasn't going to let them win. And, but he had court case after court case and it was really difficult. One of the barristers for Simon rang us up and said, we're so proud of Simon, he was so brave. This will be the worst thing that could ever possibly happen. But we didn't know what was to come. And um, yeah, there were worse things to come. One night I went out, as we generally did after finishing night shift, and we went to a, a pub in Carlton, and I went to take a drink, and I was king hit. I fell down to my knees. I was kicked in the head a number of times. I recognise him, he, he's a, he was a copper. just takes me back, but I got onto my hands and knees, and stood up. I wanted to show that a whistleblower had what it took. And then I, I fell, head first, into the floor. But I'm still here. Football and, and ultimately sport were really my escape from the policing problems that I'd had. Once I was standing on the side of the field and all of a sudden Simon goes running off the field and one of the opposition in the grandstand was screaming out, you stupid whistleblower. And I guess it just gets to the point with Simon where the frustration's too much and he went up to the guy and he said, do you know why you're yelling that out? And the guy had no idea. Heads up, boys. It was one of those moments where you just think, is this going to follow me into every aspect of my life? The target's a bit more with the handballs and the kicks, that's all. Quick kicks in the packs, boys. if I went into the corruption area that I could actually do some good. I could hopefully make a difference because of where I had been and where I had travelled. We had a team of men up to 16. We used to conduct integrity testing. It was a new way of policing. It hadn't been done in Australia before and was quite successful. Simon, as a young sergeant, was outstanding in his ability to uh, analyse situations. He was uh, very perceptive and uh, quite focused. Investigating corrupt police is probably the hardest thing that you could ever do because it's not a cat and mouse, it's a cat and cat. Both of you have the same skills. They know the loopholes. They know to speak in code. They know to write things down and hand them to each other rather than speaking over a telephone. They know all those things. All internal investigators get names as toe cutters, dogs. The current name is the filth, uh, which I believe derives from the bill, which is the English uh, term for them. So it's a worldwide phenomenon. Uh, because you are uh, hated. The ABC has learned the investigation by the police's Ethical Standards Department isn't confined to the drug squad. 
It's believed out of nearly 40 members under investigation, 25 are from the drug squad, but the remainder are members of regional and suburban stations, including Brunswick, Paran and St Kilda. In 2000, we undertook a search of the St Kilda Police Complex, which yielded a number of exhibits, guns, drugs, other contraband that uh, shouldn't have been found where it was. Simon was responsible for the analysis and uh, review of, uh, uh, of that material. Once we pulled it together, he was assigned uh, the investigation. Things started to open up. It, it, it really, to describe it, it was like finding an octopus that was peeling off everywhere and, and you were going down different arms. After years under a cloud, Victoria's drug investigation team is being scrapped with an internal corruption review recommending sweeping changes to clean out the squad. One crooked drug detective has already been jailed and confidential squad files stolen four years ago have never been found. The um, ethical standards department though was involved and it is in fact their work that has uh, found this officer. We weren't the most loved people in policing. And I think it was a victory for some of those people that we were closed down. The publicity at the time was that uh, police were being given these extra resources to uh, uh, fight corruption. But effectively what was done was robbing Peter to pay Paul. People ended up going into different areas. Neil, who was you know, a terrific copper and, and spent years in it. An old school, tough man, but very proactive. I walked him out to the car park with a cardboard box of his possessions in it. There you go, mate. Oh, thank you. Well, this is your last day. Jeez. Victoria, please. <laughs> it was fairly emotional for all of us. Uh, very nice. And Simon said to me uh, that night, he said, if they treat you like this at your rank, he said, how are they, how are they going to treat me or anybody else at this level? The system's very carnivorous. This nightmare that I am living with will continue. I am a task force of one. My investigation was given to me and me alone. If I'm not here, um, you know, happy days for some. Simon's gone from a close knit working environment to an area now where it's like a ghost town where he's been plonked at all these empty workstations with another person up another end. That in itself tells the story. You've been cast off. You're superfluous to need. I'm not going to say what I, why this has happened. People can make up their own minds. Ms Nixon has confirmed the Ethical Standards Department is investigating claims a suspended senior detective gave a criminal a gun, which was later used in a gangland killing. In the course of uh, this investigation, uh, there's some uh, intelligence being provided that uh, uh, implicates uh, a lot of uh, prominent criminals, a lot of uh, prominent police. The now disbanded drug squad is at the centre of a police corruption investigation focused on two officers accused of drug trafficking. I'm unable to elaborate on what corruption I have found other than to say that uh, it's now uh, a matter before the court of um, arrested and charged uh, six people. Victorians have almost grown used to the sight of policemen being led into the court by other police. 